Welcome back to Dominate Your Market with The Profit Finder. This is The Profit Finder, Brian Carmody. And I, today I am super psyched to have my first social media strategist guest on, Jacqueline Sargent of Sargent Digital. Jacqueline Sargent helps B, B2B teams maximize their impact and their of their social media presence. One part marketer and one part strategist, Jacqueline is 100% focused on helping companies find success with social media. From algorithm updates and content strategy to employee advocacy or social selling, Jacqueline stays on top of what's happening in social media so you don't have to. <laughs> Love that. So Jacqueline, thanks so much for being here. Really excited to learn from you today. I'm honored. I'm your first social media. <laughs> yes. I mean, and what's it's certainly not a small topic, isn't it? It's like this is... <laughs> dominating almost everything that you know people businesses are doing nowadays have some they touch social media in some way and we're going to talk a bit about um the different ways to use social media for uh for small businesses and larger ones too um so tell us first though you know why did you get into this what you know tell us a little bit about what you do why you do it you know why you why you founded the company and and so forth and let's just start there Sure. Yeah. Well, I've I've spent my career in marketing of some sort. So I found myself in a position where I was supporting my company in their marketing initiatives and trying to grow leads. And we had this LinkedIn, but we really weren't doing it, uh, doing much with it, if you will. And so I figured, all right, I'm trying to drum up <laughs> engagement, leads, eyeballs, all that stuff. And we had great content, great things to promote. And so I decided to challenge myself to start using LinkedIn. And I was able to grow my company's company page presence by 25% in just three months. And so that was the first time that I kind of thought, huh, there's, there's an opportunity here. And I don't think that everyone is taking advantage of it. So I was at a full, this was my full-time corporate job. And I had been there for about 10 years at the time. And I was, once I started doing social media for my job, I started helping friends and families that had a business. And before I knew it, I was freelancing <laughs> without even trying to, because yeah. as you mentioned, so many companies want to be on social or should be on social. And I think there is a need for help out there. And so I just decided to take a leap on myself and get out there and, and help companies find, um, like I wrote in my bio, <laughs> success with social media and really specifically in B2B. Like obviously local companies, you know, traditional small businesses, if you will, like um, salons, doctor's offices, things like that, they all can and should be on social, but I typically focus on corporate because okay. um, I find that if they're doing it, they're not doing it well. And so I think that there's a really big opportunity to take advantage because we know pretty much everyone has a social media account. So why not take advantage of those potential eyeballs and use it to your advantage? So let's talk about what you just said. You know, they're not doing it well. So go ahead and define for us if, if you can. That's probably a, a big <laughs> can of worms as well. But get, you know, yeah. as best you can to summarize it, what what does that mean? I, I would say when you hear people complaining about dusty LinkedIn pages of companies and <laughs> the corporate playbook, it's press releases, it's links to earning statements, it's come to our webinar. Um, it's not very exciting. And frankly, it's a broadcast. They're using it as a prod broadcast channel and not using it as an opportunity to start a dialogue with their prospects, with their customers with their partners with anyone really <laughs> and so uh that's probably the biggest mistake that i see if if they kind of are active on their page they're just posting kind of standard boring traditional content without giving it much thought or effort right and so you've got the boy it so it sounds like yeah you've got the 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 use of the using it as a bullhorn you know the broadcasting which mm -hmm. is okay I think, right. In some, to some degree, just not doing that as your only, your only move, so to speak. I mean, I don't necessarily know that you need to post your earning statement on LinkedIn. I don't know. Well, yeah. Like little things like that, but, but 
you know, I am of the mindset that you should be using LinkedIn to promote your webinars. Sure. But do it, do it creatively, right? Have a thoughtful plan about that. Have like a distribution strategy for your webinar content and social media should be one of the channels that you distribute that on. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a big proponent of that. And so I think some of the corporate bullhorn is okay, yep. but I think we should think about the medium, right? Think about the fact that you're on social media and what is the intent of these users when they come to social media? Um, I think more than, I haven't run the numbers lately, but I think more than half my clients are LinkedIn clients right now, or I manage their LinkedIn presence. I come in and I create a, or I come in and I create a strategy for them and I teach their team to execute that. Um, <clears throat> or I teach a sales team how to use LinkedIn more effectively. So that being said, I, I tend to focus there. But if you're going to extend a company's social media presence to the meta platforms or to TikTok, then again, we need to think about the medium or the channel, I guess, at that point, because there are some in social that say, it's a video, throw it on TikTok, throw it up as a reel, throw it as a YouTube short, and why not post it on LinkedIn too? You've got the content. But I personally think that, again, we started this off saying social media is big, right? And it is. And I think there's room for people to specialize in each of those platforms. And there are nuances. And just because it's short form video, what works and what's going to succeed is really different once you start consuming more and engaging more and getting a sense of each platform. Right. It's like, it's like almost anything, right? The digger you deep, the more you learn, the digger, the deeper you dig, the more you learn, you know, yeah. and you know, you, you can step up to the plate and it's like, you don't know what you don't know, but once you start digging into it, you realize, oh, I've learned this, I've learned this. And that's where you start uncovering how different a TikTok video is to an Instagram reel, for example. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um. Tell me about the the power of story like does that does that fit into your process too that that's just something that i've always read about you know we're humans we, we communicate with stories have done so for a million years um yeah you know how does a how does a company i think most companies struggle with that because they're like yeah. oh, but what i do is boring all day you know what i mean like literally people say that like i you know it's a it's a job and it's a I like my industry. I like my company, but you know, it's not exciting. So yeah. Well, first of all, I agree. Stories are are super powerful. And I think that's probably how case studies started, right? You were trying to tell the story of why a customer came to you. Um, and I think for 2023, 2024, I think stories still work for sure. Um, I don't think, I know that they work, yeah. um, but you know, it's a, a little, little bit of a different approach for me. I think too many companies, their content, I think I might've posted about this this week is like, look, you need to do less, less us, less, less me, we, and more about you. And so I would, I would encourage you to think about the story of your customers. What are, what are they struggling with day to day and how can your product, your solution, your offering solve their problems and tell that story, right. Or create content that supports that story supports their journey there uh I, I love that it's um also thank you you just validated some things that i kind of believe in too and 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 that is stop you know try not to talk about yourself people are interested in hearing about them so you know if you can talk about your customer or your future customers problems and the problem that they have and the results that they want well then you've got a, a head start on capturing someone's attention right? Yeah. And go from there. Um, no one's interested in, um, no one's going to read a whole lot of posts if you're um, posting about your your company resume, so to speak, which goes back to your, like your earnings report, right? <laughs> so that kind of yeah. stuff. I mean, you need to do it once in a while, right? Yeah. <laughs> like I definitely bake it into the rotation and and change up formats and test different things and, and please try and have some fun with it. <laughs> yes. Because like you said, what pe most people feel like what they do day to day is boring. And so- I don't know. I, for me, life's too short, which is ironic since I went into B2B social, which can be boring. Um, but I, I think that I challenge myself and I challenge my customers to look at it a different way and, and try a different tact. Obviously, there's exceptions to every rule. There's times when, you know, there's compliance, there's regulations, there's a serious um, 
the right. seriousness, a levity, if you will. But for the most part, you can usually find a way to approach everything with a little bit of humor and really try and humanize it. Right. So like, exactly. When, uh, there's always some kind of limitation or parameter to play in, but once you stay in the boundaries, I mean, uh, you know, I, I just remember earlier in, or it, maybe it's still happening, but it would be common for someone to put a post on LinkedIn, for example, that bordered on like the personal story type thing. And you'd get, I'd read a bunch of comments from people saying, keep this, this isn't Facebook. This isn't you know, Facebook. This, yeah. You know, and it's like, <laughs> I don't know that that you can get away. Like, I, I think you can get away with being a bit more vulnerable now and, and a bit more human and personal. And as much as, for example, LinkedIn is used for a professional um, basis and most people aren't going there for fun like they do for Facebook and, and Instagram, you know, I, I think there's a strong case to be made for making, putting some fun, some levity in those posts because- Again, businesses are made up of people and, yeah. you know, to capture human attention, you've got, you've got to put some of that in there, right? Yeah. And I think people, the platform certainly has, LinkedIn specifically has evolved where people are putting a lot more of that personal storytelling, um, a little bit more like Facebook uh, content. And so that can and does work well. There's a whole school of thought <laughs> debate um, as to whether or not you should put selfies in your posts. And I think I have managed to make it like two straight years and I've not put a selfie in a post, I don't think. Um, oh, so which, tell me about I that. Mean, I mean, I put my on selfies that. on Instagram, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's so the- So there's a thought that um, the algorithm favors um, a selfie, an image, and that that post will do, that post, that content would do better. Um, like I it. haven't done it probably. It's just not my vibe. Maybe I'm a little bit yeah. self-conscious about it, but- but what I but what I tell my clients LinkedIn, is this though, is right? what you're competing with. What was that? We're, we're talking specifically about LinkedIn, right? On the selfies? Because yeah, yeah. selfies are everywhere yeah. on the other channels. I get that. So I just want to be clear for the listeners. Even we're yes, talking no, about on LinkedIn, LinkedIn there is a debate, there is an, an ongoing debate that if you put a selfie with your post, that it will perform better. Um, and maybe the algorithm even favors it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I should test that out. <laughs> I think the closest I came to a selfie was that silly magazine cover that I did because I had to, again, I have to laugh about it and at myself because um, I think life's too short not to find the humor. In any case, I tell my clients all the time that like, this is what you're competing against, right? So yes, people come to LinkedIn um, <clears throat> for professional reasons. It's known as the professional networking, plat social networking platform. So you're competing with someone's per very personal story with their viral share with their selfies. And then you pop in with like, oh, we've, you know, look at our earnings. What? It's yeah. just, you have to take a step back and real like look holistically at why people are on the platform and the other types of content that you are competing with. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that you can do again we and it's okay to kind of focus a bit more on LinkedIn here because we actually, our listeners, our our profit finders are actually small businesses. That doesn't yeah. mean that they're not doing a lot on Facebook and Instagram, that they right. absolutely are. Um, but there's, well, I guess this does apply to, to all channels. There's There's a lot you can do with social media beyond just posting too, right? There's social listening and, and oh, research. Oh, yes. Yes, and absolutely. Kind of and and social listening, there's tools, right? There's there's crazy sophisticated social listening tools where you can program it to look for certain keywords and alert you and your brand name and your competitor's brand name. But without any tools, there is a wealth of information that you can get from social because you have your prospects, your customers, your partners out there are using LinkedIn similar to Facebook. So they're leaving comments, they're writing articles, they're starting a LinkedIn newsletter. They're doing so much with the platform and you, it's all there for the, it's free for you to access that information. It's, I mean, it, it's an investment in your time and your energy, right? But let me give you an example. So like in terms of knowing your audience, understanding your audience, uh, I had a client that was in high level digital transformation and they had all of this content that they were putting out about virtual mailrooms and 
I, I went and I did the, I did the research and I, I did keyword research. I did Google trends research. I looked in customer, um, and prospect comments and I looked at groups and whatnot. And I was like, Hey, no one says that they all say virtual mailroom. Right. So like just this really small tweak and like, no one's going to find your content if you're not talking the same language as your prospects and customers. So, and looking back now, I might have that reverse, but I know it was digital versus virtual and they were using the wrong one. So, yeah. you know, right. just how powerful is it that you, all you have to do is look to find that information. And suddenly like you have this wealth of information of pain points your customers are talking about that you never even thought about transformations they're looking for that you can help them with. So yeah, you know, I, I'm glad that you brought that up first before I did, because it's so, so true. Like, yes, I think you should be posting because one of the things that I say constantly is if you are not telling your story, someone else is, right? Your partners are going to differentiate themselves against you if you don't have a position. Your partners can, you know, your or your prospects can say whatever they want and you're not out there playing a little bit of offense. Um, look at something like Glassdoor, which is not quite social media, but you have employees and ex-employees talking about your business, talking about your company and your culture. If you're trying to do recruiting and you don't have any type of messaging about your culture, about what it's like to work at your company on your social channels, then that's the only story being told, right? Mm -hmm. So there's so many different applications for how a company can use their very free organic social media presence and platforms to help in any number of ways. Right. So a couple of things you, you just said kind of reminded me too about when you're talking about the language and, and telling your story or someone else is, if you don't tell your story, someone else is going to. Yeah. So um, I'm always helping my clients with, um, you know, backing away from using jargon in, yeah. in their everywhere they talk, type or whatever, you know what I mean? Websites, social posts, blogs, all of it, ads. And jargon is just like, it it's becomes this dumbed down language that everybody starts using for shortcut reasons. And it's not, it's another thing I always, I always teach people is that it's not whether other people can, other companies can do what you do. It's whether they can say what you say. And if everybody's using jargon, then you all sound the same. And guess what? When you all sound the same, the only thing left for a customer to choose to differentiate you with is your price. Mm -hmm. And it's just a price competition or a price war to go down. So, um, you know, the language, the 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 key words that you, you that you use and how you describe yourself, um, so critical. And it's such a great way, you know, doing what you do for companies. It's such a great way for the customer, the company to really take the reins and tell their story using the language of the customer that they understand, you know? Yes. Cause then, yeah. then they can see yourself. It, they can see themselves in your copy, yes. in your post, yeah. like, Oh my God, it's me. <laughs> like, I yeah. struggle with that. I need help with that. And you know, obviously not every, like you're not, <laughs> it's not that easy. Right. But, but yeah. really it, it can be eerily easy in that sense when you're taking advantage of that. Mm -hmm. There's a conversation going in every going on in every customer's mind. Um, there's a problem that they have that they don't want, and there's a result they want that they don't have. Yeah. And that's the trigger that helps them that in, that's what interrupts their day when they see someone type something or put out a video that resonates with that conversation in their head. Yeah. And, and like, you know, personally for my business, I think I struggle with that, Brian, because social media is so big because it can be so many things because it can feel abstract. Right. So I'm putting out these posts to get ahead of what my competitors might be saying. I'm, you know, I'm here because I feel like I kind of have to be, uh, there's like, it's, it feels abstract. So when I sit down and I think about like, oh, what's the problem that I solve for them? It could be any number of things. And, um, my, like the number one thing my clients ask me is how do we measure this? Right. Yes. Um, and that's a, that's a doozy because there's a very tactical, you can, you can measure followers, right. And you can measure, um, 
traffic, organic traffic, that referral traffic that comes from social platforms. But, you know, I, I think there's larger indicators that I don't always have insight to because I'm not in their, their weeds of their business, but I, it's, it's sticky. And, you know, there is another conversation about dark social and about the lack of attribution and iOS changes, <laughs> privacy regulations have not made any of this easier. And I don't even, I don't do ads. I don't, dabble in ads. I am a 100% organic girl. And that makes it harder for me, right, to talk about the measurement. But, you know, unfortunately, I, I just think, first of all, I believe wholeheartedly in social media for business and that it's, it, when done well, I mean, literally not even, not even exceedingly well, right? Like if you just do the bare minimum, um, then I think right there, it's one of the highest ROI marketing things you can do because it's, it's free. It gets your message out there. Um, it plays, you can play offense, you can play defense, you can support new partnerships, new customers, recruiting, like it's countless, the number of things that you can do, especially if you have any type of content engine already. And I'm just babbling now, but it's easy, right? To re it's, it's once you get into it, you can repurpose all of that for your organic needs. So I'm, I'm very convinced it's like one of the highest ROI things, but it, it does require a little bit of a leap on behalf of the brand and the customer and that buy-in because it's not like there is not always a direct line because it's organic. I don't have a form, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm doing a campaign with a form and I can prove to you a hundred people saw this form, 10 of them filled it out. And one of them spent $10,000 and you can dial down the ROI. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely like when I look at my own business and you're, you know, if you'd ask like, Jacqueline, what's the one, what's the problem they have? And you help them not to have it. Like it's really hard because social can be used for so many different applications. What if, um, have you guys ever, uh, maybe tell me if this is a dumb idea right here, live on TV. I don't care. Um, <laughs> why couldn't, um, couldn't a company basically create a system within their communications to their customers? It could be a salesperson talking to them or, or during some interaction, customer service during onboarding, for example, however, you know, they've got systems to, to talk to their customers at different stages. Just simply asking them, did you did you hear about us through social media? Is that how you came to us? Yeah, and they that, absolutely that answer alone would be pretty compelling. That would be a compelling enough metric for me. Yeah, no, and and that's they start they can they should. I would love that. I think yeah. the challenge becomes you know there was a really famous statistic at one point that you, a person needs to see a brand message seven times to be able to remember it. Right. Yep. That statistic is from like the seventies. So that was before our phones, commercials, internet, our, like our email blowing up, 18 different social media platforms and our like ADD tendencies. I can't even imagine, I can't remember what I have for breakfast. I can't imagine yeah. what that updated stat is. And so it's so hard because even, yeah. even putting that process into place, like maybe the social post was the last thing that provided like that prompted you to click through, but you'd been getting their retargeting ads for a month. You'd seen commercials, you read a white paper, you saw them at a conference. Um, and so I, I'm just pointing out that it's, you know, it's all becoming murky. And so for me, I think social media is, it's a really smart way to holistically make sure that your message is matching and aligning with all of the, uh, and supporting, I almost call it like running air cover. So one of the things that I do yeah. with my clients is I ask them about their sales, their upcoming sales cycle. So from running their corporate channel, what, what does your sales cycle, like your campaigns look like over the next three, six, eight months? Can I, can I work with someone? One, because then we can make sure that we have content that aligns with that messaging and that sales. So then if, if, if you hit someone with a cold e email and an outbound campaign, they go look you up on social. Ooh, look, we have messaging that aligns, right? We're not talking about something wildly different. And so I think it's a really nice way to make sure that everything comes together holistically. Um, I always say social shouldn't be done in a vacuum. I, you know, my, my experience, you know, when I ran the manufacturing company and in the last couple of years, helping clients with their businesses in a holistic way too, the growth has never been because of one home run from one tactic. You know what I mean? It's always been a bunch of strategies piled on top of each other. And, um, I, this kind of, I just kind of 
supports your point, I think, to, you know, this, the social's got to be there because you, you just never know where it's going to, it's just, you want to hit people from 40 different angles. It's yeah. not seven times that they need to see the message anymore. It's the, the number I heard was 40 lately, but who, you know, who knows still. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. Right. Yeah. And, and, but the point is, you know, some of the, let's call it 40, right. Some of those are going to be from social media touches. Some of those are going to be email. Some of those are going to be text or in person or networking or an event or a sponsorship yeah. or something like that. So the point is it almost all matters. I mean, yeah, there's a, you can apply a process to figure out, okay, what's not serving us and cut that cost out of the way. But more often than not, you you need to come at this like an octopus and you need to, you know, you just need yeah. to be snapping your uh, your prospects with multiple tacticals to uh, to get at them. Yeah. All right. So let, let's sort of shift gears a little bit. Not really, but because you, you've been talking about all this wisdom and, and depth of knowledge that you have. There's so much that goes into this. So talk to me about what's the difference between a person having a social media account in a business having a social media account. And what I mean by mm -hmm. that is talk about how those differ along the lines of process, goals, structure, timing and frequency, content. Yeah. In other words, let me just give you one more last clarification. This is where I'm really getting at. In other words, just because my 21-year-old daughter uses Instagram every day, it doesn't mean she's qualified to manage the social channel for a corporate brand, correct? <laughs> Those are like two wildly different things. <laughs> um, okay, so. Talk to me about what goes into this to be a social media strategist. Okay, that's a lot to unpack. Um, here's what I would say. You're In welcome. the world of social, there, there are social media managers, there's social media strategists, there's okay. content creators, there's video, like the list even oh, wow. just within social, it, it gets really wide. And there is a misnomer that your social media manager should be doing all the things. They should film the video, edit the video, post the video, schedule the video, write captions for the video. Like there is a lot that goes into a social media post that I, I think does a disservice to people that are in this industry. And if I, and if I look at maybe your 21 daughter, 21 year old daughter, you know, she kind of when she films a quick TikTok or a, a quick Instagram video, that's for herself, right? It doesn't need to align. And we've talked about, we've been talking about aligning holistically with your messaging. It doesn't need to support all of your other corporate objectives and messaging and goals and all that stuff. And so she can film that very quickly and throw that up and be on with her day. So mm -hmm. I think I literally think I posted a thread about this today. I don't know if you follow me. Um, I do. I fully believe that pulling in like younger people, they're digital, I call us, they're digital na natives, right? They were practically yeah. born with a smartphone in their hands. Right. They probably create TikToks better than I do. By the way, they might even create reels better than I do because they're just, they're up to speed on the, the fast moving nuances of that platform. And so I actually think they could be wonderful creators, yep. but the difference is when you want to work with a strategist, which is what I am, is I'm going to tell you, don't bother with TikTok because I understand your user base and they're not there. Like I have 15 plus years in business. I've spent my career in digital marketing and communications. I spent 10 years working with and training sales teams. So I understand your market and what platforms they live on and where you should be talking, how much you should be talking, what you should be saying, how to align with all your corporate messaging. And so then you can either engage with me for some of the, the work or engage with a creator that can, if I say you should be on Instagram doing X, Y, and Z, you can be on with a creator and we can give specific guidance, but letting them just create videos because I don't think is a strategy for long-term success. So I think that's kind of my answer with someone who is younger and just good at a specific platform. I think there's absolute value in a space, but I think it's different than um, thinking through a higher level strategy for your brand. So, well, so in other words, it's not about, right. It's not about um, 
you know, a, a, a company is not really doing themselves a favor if they think they can hire and pay uh, a social, I mean, a, a college student part-time hours, part-time rates to quote unquote, run their social media channels. Just because they not, have time to post, that's not- I would not recommend, to... yeah. I would not recommend that without guidance without right. strategy with it with like that you could you could do that but you need a lot to get them there and get them up to speed um mm -hmm. i would not trust my like i i i own my own brand of business and i wouldn't trust that to just anyone exactly it's no i'm definitely hearing that there's a like like all kinds of marketing that has come before social media marketing <clears throat> and social media in general uh there is a science and a psychology to it yeah. and um yeah. And it's, it's not as simple as just because it started out as a fun platform, like for example, Facebook was or whatever it's, it's now evolved into a, as much of a science as, you know, the advertising wizards that worked on Madison Avenue, you know, in the sixties, like they definitely didn't just wing it. They had a science to it, you know, and that's where this came from. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's not to discount like, you know, in general, but I always just, I, I do hear that a lot. Like, oh, we have someone that helps us with that. And it's like, okay, well, there's a difference between someone that helps and someone yeah. that's actually driving a strategy that meets your goals, that's gaining, you know, helping with visibility or awareness or making progress mm -hmm. in X, Y, Z, depending on what your goals for the platform are. Um, is there any um, rule of thumb as to how many channels a business should be on? I don't think there's a rule of thumb. Okay. I think it's, you know, a case by case basis, depending on the business. Um, and also depending, so it depends on the business, it depends on their goals and it depends on the makeup of their team. Right. Yep. Um, if you have a team that likes, not even likes, <laughs> but if you, I hear so many companies ask me, should I be on TikTok? And it's like, maybe. I don't know. Let's, let's yeah. talk a little bit. And if you want to be on TikTok, that is a whole other set of skills than if you want to or, or need to be on LinkedIn. If you want to do the meta platform, if you want to, you know, if you want to be on YouTube, you need, you need a whole, whole, whole set of strategies to run an effective YouTube channel and a YouTube strategy, right? Like, I don't know. I just, I don't think people are looking at them as the same, but they are like, you wouldn't ask someone who normally writes white papers to suddenly start getting on camera and running your YouTube channel. But I see people all the time, just ask a marketer, Hey, can you post on LinkedIn for us? And it's like, yeah. they sh sure they can, of course, but it's, it's not going, you know, you need to have people that are specialized in that skill set. Um, cause, cause TikTok especially is, is a different beast than the other platforms. So is YouTube. So is meta, the list goes on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Jacqueline, what, let me, um, ask you this. What value do you provide that you wish more people knew about? Oh. Good question. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Well, I think working with uh, an outside strategist, first of all, is beneficial because I'm in multiple accounts. I'm in multiple industries. And so, you know, someone said to me the other day, oh, we we know the benchmarks. We are doing really well. Um, and another person was like, oh, my posts get like 200 views. We're doing great. And it's like, I'm in six other accounts and I know that I know that number is not where it should be or could be. So I have insight into, you know, trends and performance across industries and across different types of accounts that can be helpful. Obviously, you know, I have NDAs and all that stuff and I would never, you know, that stuff stays sure. um, private, but just again, larger kind of insight into what's working and what's not. I think that is something that is maybe underestimated when you're working with an outside resource and or expert <laughs> and bringing them, them in. So I think that's one big thing. And then the other thing is, again, I spent a career in marketing communications. I had a career in SEO. I had a career in PPC. I shifted over to CRMs. I've done um, the Salesforce thing. I've done marketing communications. And so I bring a lot of different perspectives to 
all culminate in this, this idea of social media marketing and using social media marketing, um, as a tool to message all of your different other strategies that are, that are going on and create this holistic presence for your company. Got it. Um, you, you know, so how, actually, let me ask you this. What, what is, um, how, how do people, how do you start working with you? How do people start working with you or companies start working with you? And, and, and what I mean is, I guess, what's that initial, like, first assessment? I mean, pre before they decide to hire you, what is that first engagement with you like to figure out if there's a fit, if you can do something for them, you know, all that kind of thing? Because I, I just, I, I know there's a lot of confusion around uh, for business owners and leaders about what can social media do for us? And are we doing it right? And are we doing as well as we think we are, all, you know, all that kind of stuff. So what, what does that first like initial engagement pre-hire look like? Yeah. Well, we usually have a call and I like to ask about goal, their goals for the platform. Um, Cause that's my first level set. Okay. Some folks have very unrealistic expectations or goals, right? Like yep. I, I literally had someone be like, Hey, yeah, I just need you to make me go viral. <laughs> That's and all. that's like, we're not, we're not a fit. We're not a fit. Yeah. That's yeah. all. That's all. Yeah. Um, and, but then also for the most part, companies that do best on social, they already have content to pull from, right? That might be a blog. That might be a podcast. That might be an ongoing webinar series that is going to make me most successful and most hands off, right? When I can let I under I can take that messaging, I can repurpose it, I can add on it, I can expand on it, I can um really be an asset to the team and kind of run with things without needing constant hand holding and input from the team. But again, I come to this with 15 years of experience. If you're working with someone who's a little bit more junior, they might need more direction or hand holding in what to do. But one of the things with you know, one of the reasons that I am, I think such an asset to my team is I take things off their plate, right? They know their social is done. They know their social is high quality. It's professional and it serves what their customers need. So anyway, what the second thing is kind of after I figure out what their goals and expectations are, it's like, all right, so let's look at kind of what you have to work with because we have to, again, set expectations that if you don't have that type of content, if we need to be creating that from scratch, then that is going to drive the price up and that can be a factor in whether they want to move forward as well. Got it. What is, um, let's pretend you're, you're doing a live coaching session right now to, you know, all of the people listening, what, what could you give our business owner listeners? Um, you know, what, what's that, what one piece of advice can you give in regard to running their socials? What would that be? You know, like um, for them to take it and just go do it. So I think the best strategy for doing it yourself is <sighs> pillar content. So if you like content pillars, content buckets, we've all heard about it, right? But this is a little bit different. So you're going to have one long form piece of content a month. Make it even easier if you have different themes. Like for me, I have like, you know, general corporate social media. I have social selling. I have employee advocacy. So if I was going to take up those as three themes and do a theme a quarter and then have all kinds of sub, uh, then have a couple different sub topics. So I would do for one month, I would have a really long form asset. Maybe it's a podcast. Maybe it's a YouTube video. Maybe I like to blog, whatever it is that I like to, or you business owner, whatever you're most comfortable creating. Cause if you don't like it, if, if that doesn't shine through in what you're doing, mm -hmm. never going to work. Then you take that and you chunk it out for your social. Chop so, it up. Yep, chop it up. And so if you, if it's a YouTube, you have little clips, you can pull out quotes, you can tell a story and just drive back to that YouTube channel. And so you can ride that for three posts a week for an entire month easily. And then you can supplement that with standard, whatever you need to do, right? Corporate holidays, earning statements, webinar yeah. invites. <laughs> um, but that becomes kind of your core content for the month. 
And you can even batch those ahead of time. And that's going to make your life so much easier. And in essence, that's what I'm doing when I come in and I, and you already have a blog, you already have webinars. I'm, I'm doing that for you, right? I'm figuring out what makes the most sense to chuck out, chunk out. That's the very technical term. Um, mm -hmm. Then I'm doing the work of like, okay, what are the captions? How are people talking about this? What are the pain points? Um, and, and the more like tactical pieces behind it. But if you are a small, a small business person and you don't want to outsource, and you want to do it yourself, then that is probably the most straightforward strategy until you're ready to bring on help. Mm -hmm. Jacqueline, today has been awesome. And we jam packed a ton of information. Oh, I babbled, sorry. <laughs> oh, there's, there's, like we said, there's so much to this, so much to unpack. It's, it's, uh, but you, you gave us a lot of clear stuff to go with. Um, where do you want people to find you? What's the best I'm sure you're in a lot of places. Where's the best <laughs> easiest way for people to find you? Yeah. Well, my website is sergeantdigital.com. Very easy. Um, and then you asked about the bare minimum for social channels. So personally, I'm on Instagram and LinkedIn. They are my two favorite places to hang out. Okay. And I'm active there. So those are the two places you can find me. All right. Awesome. Profit, profit finders. I'm going to link in the show notes to uh, Jacqueline's um profile so that you can find her quickly and, and reach out if you want to. And um, Jacqueline, thanks again. This was really, really awesome. I appreciate the energy you brought to, brought to the subject. And um, it's, it's no doubt, uh, it's no surprise why you're so successful at what you do. Um, you clearly have um, not only a depth of knowledge, but a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, passion about the, the subject as well. Thanks for joining mm -hmm. us. Thanks for having me.